I've got some fresh news on Samsung's next foldable, the Galaxy Z Flip 7, and this one's a first for the lineup. Let's dive in. According to a South Korean media report, Samsung has started mass-producing the Galaxy Z Flip 7, and for the first time ever, it's launching with an Exynos chip, the Exynos 2500. That's a big shift, since all previous Z Flip models have used Qualcomm processors. Now here's where it gets interesting. Ex-leaker Jukan Losriev suggests the Flip 7 might actually pack an Exynos 2500E, a slightly nerfed version of the standard chip. Either way, this marks the first Galaxy Z foldable to ship with Exynos silicon. The Exynos 2500 is built on Samsung's cutting-edge 3NM SF3-3 JAP node, but early industry estimates pegged its yields at only about 40%, which isn't great for mass production. Still, Samsung appears to be moving ahead, likely to cut costs and give its foundry business a boost. Foldable sales volumes are relatively low compared to mainstream models, so Samsung doesn't need as many chips. Plus, ramping up ESTA 3 production now will help Samsung dial in their process for the next Gen 2 M f 2 node, which is slated to produce AI chips for big clients like PFN and potentially Qualcomm. It's worth noting that the Galaxy Z Flip 7 will be the only foldable rocking an Exynos chip in 2025. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 is expected to stick with the Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy, the same chip on the Galaxy S25 series, and next year's Z Fold 8 and Z Flip 8 will reportedly switch back to the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 for Galaxy. As for the rest of the specs, the Z Flip 7 is rumored to bring incremental upgrades over the Flip 6, think slightly better cameras, refined hinges, and battery tweaks, rather than a full redesign. So what do you think about Samsung finally using Exynos in a foldable? Are you curious to see how the Exynos 2500 performs, or would you have preferred Snapdragon? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Summer's almost here, and you know what that means. Samsung's next big release is just around the corner, yet we're talking about the Galaxy Z Flip 7. Now don't get me wrong, the Z Flip 6 was a solid phone, but it kind of felt like Samsung just played it safe, right? We got a few nice upgrades like better thermal management and a slightly bigger cover screen, but overall, it felt kinda underwhelming. So what's coming with the Z Flip 7? Well, if the rumors are true, Samsung could really be bringing the heat this time. Let's break down everything we know so far about this next-gen flip phone. First things first, don't expect a complete redesign here. Samsung loves to play it safe with their foldables, small tweaks, not total overhauls. But word on the street is that we might see a shift from the soft, rounded edges to a more boxy design. Why? Well, it could be to make room for a bigger battery or updated displays without adding bulk. You might also see the dimensions stretch a bit, which won't be a huge leap, but enough to make a difference in hand feel. As for the frame, there's talk of a titanium frame, similar to the Galaxy S25 Ultra. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This is still a toss-up. Now, last year's dual rail hinge on the Z Flip 6 was a big win. Smoother action, better durability, it could survive 200,000 folds. This year, it sounds like Samsung is aiming for even more toughness, which is great if you plan to keep your phone for a while. That being said, there's still no real update on dust resistance. IP48 is fine for splashes and some sand, but don't take it diving. One of the biggest rumors this year, that outer screen. We're hearing it could jump to a 4-inch display, out from last year's 3.4-inch, and it could actually do more than just show the tie-in widgets. Think full apps, smoother performance, and better resolution. Basically, what we've seen from Motorola's Razer Plus. If Samsung can pull this off, it could be a game-changer. The inner screen might get a slight bump too, possibly going from 6.7 inches to 6.8, or even 6.85 inches. Samsung's also supposedly trimming those bezels and maybe reducing the crease, though don't expect a crease-free screen just yet. Baby steps, right? Now let's talk cameras. Don't expect any huge jumps. The 50MP wide and 12MP ultra-wide setup, along with the 10MP selfie cam, will probably stay the same. But thanks to better image processing and AI magic, we could still see sharper and cleaner shots. As for performance, there were rumors that Samsung might toss in the new Exynos 2500 chip, but it looks like production issues might have shut that down. Most signs now point to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, 
especially in the US, since Samsung hasn't used Exynos chips in nearly a decade. Either way, expect flagship level performance and better power efficiency. Battery-wise, the Z Flip 7 is rumored to get a slight boost to 4,300 ma, up from 4,000 ma. It's not a massive jump, but combine that with a more efficient chip and display, and we could see noticeably better battery life. Plus, with a more functional cover screen, you won't need to flip open the phone as often, which should help conserve juice. Here's the bummer. Wired charging is still capped at 25W. It's not terrible, but in 2025, it feels like Samsung is playing it safe, probably to keep heat in check with the foldable design. Now with Android 16 rolling out earlier than usual, the Z Flip 7 might launch with One UI 8 right out of the box. That means some fresh Android features and maybe even more Galaxy Eye tools baked in from day one. As for the price, last year, Samsung bumped the Z Flip's base price to $1,099, Unless there's a surprise ultra premium model, we're expecting the Z Flip 7 to stick with the same pricing. $1,099 for 256GB and $1,219 for 512GB. So what do you think? Are you hyped for the Galaxy Z Flip 7? Are you waiting for more innovation or are you just here for the new colors? Drop your thoughts in the comments below.